Nope is the 2022 horror thriller a starring Kiki Palmer, Daniel Kaluuya, Steven Yeun, and Brandon Perea. And it is also directed by Jordan Peele. <laughs> uh, this movie. Um, I, I don't know how to feel about this movie. If, a, it's a Jordan Peele movie, so it's beautifully shot. It's, it's masterfully directed. Like, he is, he is, you know, it's, it's movies like this that make you kind of appreciate him as an artist, like, as a director. Because he is, he is directing the hell out of, out of his movies. Like, I, I guess the way, I feel very similar to this movie as I feel about Us. It's, it's, is that he is he's writing a novel with film almost he's like he's crafting like a work with like the the camera lens that not not too many people I, the show they want to do but I don't think a lot of people are able to do with with that said I it's so like some things can be so obtuse and so just kind of like in its own vibe that it throws me off. <laughs> like I'm just not into it. This kind of comes very close to being that that type of movie for me. And there's nothing like it's again it's beautifully shot. Like that everybody's doing their thing in this. Kiki Palmer's doing her thing. Daniel Kaluuya is being. I don't know, like Daniel Kaluuya, he's doing, he's doing, he's trying something different here. He's, he's this very kind of, he's this very kind of introverted, very uh, low key, a very toned down performance from him. And like, I think he, he nails it. He nails it. But I, it's not, it's not kind of what I want out of a performance or out of a, a Daniel Kaluuya performance. He's such a big, such a big, uh, like, uh, character actor this very kind of gregarious personality just naturally and and like i so i give him props for his acting uh in this in this movie right but i don't know if that's the kind of thing i want from Dan, daniel kaluuya like moving forward like he he has this he has such a strong presence on film that like no nah, I, I i need more charisma i want more like out of him in in a performance but Kiki Palmer, and like he's playing opposite Kiki Palmer, who's playing his sister. Like, like she is, she's Kiki, she's playing Kiki Palmer, from what I could tell in this movie. You know, she is like very much playing herself. She's out there. She's loud. She's, you know, very personal, you know, in in this uh, movie. But, and and again, Steven Yoon is playing kind of like this, uh, like a little bit part. He, He's playing this kind of like side character. I don't know side character, but he, he kind of fills in a lot of the backstory or a lot of like what is happening in here. It's, I like the movie, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite. And again, it's critically, this movie is all, all over the place. Some people say it's the worst movie he's done. Some people say it's the greatest thing he's ever done. I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> I'm kind of like... I can see people. I can see both sides of that argument. I mean, if in the, I like to think of this as like a Jaws with a space alien in it. It's, it kind of has that tone to it. But at the same time, Jaws had a pay. There's a payoff in this movie too. But it, like, or maybe it's because it's alien and there's so much left to be explained or left to, to interpretation with this. J Jaws is a shark. We know what a shark is. Like, there's no like, there's not a lot of thought that goes in that. Like, a day at any ordinary day at the beach could be like your worst day ever because like a great white shark sees you and just thinks, yeah, yeah, I'm going to eat that person swimming right now. And yeah, we get that. We can connect with that. However, this uh, space area, I don't know if it's if it's a spoiler to say like it's what it is still at this point but th there's a lot and and with the space alien being this also this critique of of hollywood as well like i you know i okay i get that i think he's been in 
interviews and stuff talking about spectacle and you know the 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 alien is supposed to be like this stand-in for for spectacle or because like the the opening of the thing looks very much like a cell phone camera to me and it's it kind of t- i i made that correlation pretty early on like ah uh, okay I, I think i know what what and you can't look at it if you look at it then it got you and if you stare into the abyss you know the abyss will come and swallow you up it's it's allegory for fame it's allegory for hollywood it's allegory for like you know of uh, going viral all all that stuff okay right i got it but why i don't know like it's, it seems very detached like from reasoning and just i, I don't know i didn't get i i got it but i didn't I'm like okay where is it why is it where did it come from like what what is and it can pretend to be a cloud too like Huh? <laughs> you know, I, I, there's a lot of it that's just like, I guess, left up to your interpretation. OK, I guess. Uh, but one of the things that I think uh, Jordan Peele is very much like. I think he's shown so in this film, he's shown he's a mastery of is sound design. And how the sound design it like kind of interplays with with uh the the visuals as well because if you i I like to think this movie is much scarier in like the sound scope than it is like kind of like on film and there and and he he's a master at like drawing tension in all of his movies he has that like he can play tension like a fiddle almost like he he's a master at doing that but that coupled with the sound design in this too it's it was yeah i, I really enjoyed it i because like there's there's uh sections in this like when you hear like you'll hear a weird sound like so when um keith david who had a part in this uh like he he kind of like has a, a death scene very early in the movie that kind of like kind of kicks everything off and you hear this weird kind of sound you don't you not understand you don't really understand what you're hearing but you know it's it sounds weird it sounds very alien or is it like what what was that and that happens constantly throughout in the movie and there's these shrieks and these screams and it's not until like the very end you figure oh that's what that was when i was hearing it and that's why it sounds very uh because it's like a a, at first you think it's like a, a alien cry or something but then you realize, no, that's it's something completely different. That's why it sounds like it's like a, a scream of pain or something like that. You know, you're like, oh, that's that's what that was. And that's like his his mastery of, of film and storytelling is like, like it's it's 100 percent on point with this. But then the story, but the story is just all over the place. Right. Like I and he has this I guess he is trying to and put this idea of. A bad miracle, which in itself is an oxymoron. Like, there's, there's no such thing as a bad miracle. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, th- I think I know he, I, he's trying to say something that's so random and weird that happens that I don't know. You can say distracts from something terrible that's happening there, or like a a silver lining to a, like a tragedy or something, right? I think that's what he's going at. But I, to me, he kind of missed the the mark on that. Into things that just make no sense, like the shoe that's just standing straight up. I'm like, okay, I. But I guess he's saying like, it draw uh, attention away from him, so the from the, uh, the kid. Well, I see. I'm going into spoiler territory. I don't know if you could talk about this movie without going into spoilers. But it, anyway, I it's like, I, I, I love this movie. At the same time, it's just like I. Uh, I don't know. I'll give it a three. <laughs> I think I'll give it a three out of five.